Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. In this tutorial, I'll show you how you can create a puzzle image effect like this in Photoshop. We're going to download the puzzle texture and then go ahead and create this effect using it. To create the puzzle effect, first of all, unless you're using Photoshop CS4 or earlier, you're going to go and have to get a file. So I'm going to give you the link here, and these are Photoshop CS5 optional plugins. Now, I'm using Photoshop CC 2015, but since all we want from this plugin file is a set of PSD and JPEG textures, it doesn't matter that these are for Photoshop CS5, because what we're getting are files that are just picture files. There's no coding in it at all. So I'm just going to run down to the bottom here. You want to make sure that this says your platform. So if you're on a Mac, you'll need the Mac ones. And click to proceed to download. That opens up a new page and you can read a bit about it and you can click download now. Now I've already downloaded these so let's go and pick up my download folder. So here's my download folder and this is the file that I downloaded. So I'm double clicking on it and I'm going to look inside it because inside it is a PDF file that explains a little bit of detail that can be useful and there's the presets folder and the presets folder contains this textures folder and that's what you need. So let's just tuck this out of the way for a minute and let's go and have a look at the PDF. So down here on page 5 of the PDF it says textures for the texturizer filter. So here it says the texturizer filter for Photoshop CS4 will work in Photoshop CS5 as well. Well, it works in everything up to CC 2015. And so it tells you to install these textures to use with the texturizer filter. You need to drop them into your Adobe CS5 presets folder. So for this read, Adobe CC 2015 presets folder and restart Photoshop. Well, you don't actually need to restart Photoshop. So let's see what we're going to do. So I'm going to my C drive, program files, Adobe, Adobe Photoshop CC 2015 presets folder. And you'll see that there is no texture folder here. And that's why we're not able to find the puzzle texture because they were left out of this version and like every version since Photoshop CS4. So what we're going to do is out of this file that we downloaded, we're going to grab this textures folder and just drop it in to the presets folder and I'm using my computer as administrator so I can just drop it in. And so these have been copied across. So here they are now in the folder that I was told to drop them into. Now, let's just go back out of here. I'm leaving all my Windows Explorer folders open for a good reason, I'll tell you in that in a minute. So let's just go and open a file to use. So this is the file I'm going to use. So now before I start working with the filter, I want to make a duplicate of this layer. So I'm going to drag and drop it into the new layer icon so I have a second version of this image because I want to be able to get access to it. I'll choose Filter and then Filter Gallery. There's no need to convert it for smart filters. Let's just size this. So I'm going to choose Fit on Screen. And here we are with the texturizer. So you'll come down here to Texture and then choose Texturizer. So I'm going to just make sure that everything's working right here. I just need to click on Texturizer so that it is selected. And right now this is the canvas texture. And of course it looks pretty awful. Now in the list of brick, burlap, canvas and sandstone, in other words, no puzzle pattern. But here is a drop down menu which allows us to load a texture file. So I'm going to click here on Load Texture. And what I want to do is to go back to the presets folder that I had open earlier. And this is why I didn't close it, because I want to grab this. So I'm going to right click this and choose Copy, because it's just going to save me having to navigate my system. I'm going to come in here and just click Paste. So this is going to take me straight away to the presets folder where I put my textures. So I'm going to open up my textures and here is Puzzle PSD and this is the file that we need. So we'll click Open. And now we get access to the puzzle texture. And we can adjust the scaling so we can make it bigger or smaller. So I want it to be quite big. And we can change the relief. And so to get a more subtle effect, I'm going to bring the relief down. 
and the light you can adjust the light so at the moment it's top left but we could make it bottom left and you can see that the whole look changes according to where the light is coming from well I prefer my light to come from the top left because that's a bit more like sunlight so if I'm happy with this all I need to do is to click OK and so there is our puzzle effect and now we can start working on the extras for example removing a piece from the puzzle which is what we're going to do now so to cut out our puzzle piece we're going to first want to zoom in to where we want to cut the piece out and I'm going to cut this piece out here so I'm just going to zoom in so I can see it clearly on the screen I'm going to use the space bar so that I can position it where I can see it and now we're going to need to use the pen tool because the pen tool is probably the easiest tool to do this with so I'm going to select the pen tool but I want to create a path so I'm just going to click here on path and now I'm going to start by just clicking and dragging in the direction I'm headed in so I'm going off in this direction I'm going to click and drag here I'm going to come around the corner and click and drag it's better not to put anchor points on corners if you can possibly help it so I'm going to come over here a bit away from this corner here we come back to here there's a nice point in there that I can just click and drag into now I need to head in this direction and if I want to take the handle with me I can hold the alt or option key and just swing the handle round so it's headed in the direction that I'm headed off in and here now I'm headed back down here I'm just going to continue to draw a pen line around this jigsaw shape and if you make a mistake don't worry because you can come back in a minute and fix it up it's better to at least get your shape down at this point even if it's not perfect like this is not perfect here if you need to alter a handle hold down the alt key just so that you can drag it into position I think I've gone too far with that okay this is going to need fixing in a minute the whole effect is pretty forgiving you don't have to be a hundred percent accurate because by the time you actually move away from the image you zoom back out again you're not going to see a lot of problems provided you get sort of near enough to this shape now I've got some problems I need to iron out well I'm going to the direct selection tool because that allows me to select this individual point and I'm going to zoom in here a bit closer still so you can see what's going on the direct selection tool I can alter the handles here if I want the handles to be split I'm going to hold the alt or option key and that allows me to alter one handle and not both of them I think this needs to come in a little bit and so what I'll do is just work my way around the shape and just see if I can get it a little bit better I'm holding down the space bar to move away to move the image as I'm working so let's just go and get this one so I'm going to stop talking and just speed up the video as I just finesse this Now this point I actually want to round it off a bit and it's not rounded so I'm going to select it and I'm going to click here on the convert point tool because that will convert it into a point that has handles now I can come back to the direct selection tool and work with it sometimes you'll find that a point doesn't have handles and you decide later that you actually do need handles on it So once you've got the shape all selected I'm going to press Control 0 to just move back out so you can see the shape is now selected now that we've made our selection it's time to go to the paths palette so I'm just going to click on paths if you don't see your paths palette you can choose window and then paths 
And what we've got here is a work path and what we want to do is to convert it into a selection. So there's this option here and it reads load path as a selection. So I'm just going to click here to make this into a selection. And now that we've got a selection, we can do something with it. What we want to do is to cut this out of the image and put it on its own layer. So I'll choose layer, new layer via cut. Now we're still seeing the image underneath and the reason for this is that I had the original image underneath. So I'm just going to turn that off and go to the Move tool and you'll see here that I have this piece. So I'm just going to move it out of the way and now you can see that there's actually a hollow underneath where that was. So I'm just going to rotate this piece and just put it sort of pretty close to where it was but so that obviously it is a piece out of the jigsaw puzzle. And we're going to add a layer in between these two layers. So I'm going to click here on the background layer and I'm going to click new layer so I can add a layer underneath it. And let's fill it with white. White is my current background color so I can press Control backspace command delete on the Mac. For this piece we want to add a shadow to it. So I'm going to grab the FX icon here, choose drop shadow and we want a better shadow than that. So I'm going to increase the size a little bit. I want the angle to come in pretty much at the same angle as we chose for the light. So that's coming in from the top left. Now the distance is looking pretty good. The spread is way too much and the size is too much. So I'm just going to take that down a little bit and click OK. And now we want a shadow in here too. So let's go to this layer and let's add a drop shadow to it. Because there's a cutout piece, we'll be able to see the drop shadow in the cutout area, but we're not seeing it on the rest of the image because there are no holes in it. So we're using the exact same drop shadow here as we used on this piece because it just defaults to settings we had previously. So I'll click OK. So one of the things I could do is to go back and cut out another puzzle piece and maybe cut out two or three just to finish off the appearance of this being a jigsaw puzzle from which pieces are still not complete. I'm going to go ahead and do that and I'm going to speed up the video just so that you can see the final result. So here's the finished result. I've pulled out three pieces from my pattern and you'll have noticed perhaps that when I cut these using layer, new, layer via cut that they've been cut onto their own layer but they've taken a drop shadow with them so I haven't had to reapply the drop shadow to each of these pieces. That has happened automatically. 
So I'm just going to click that check mark just to finish off that process. So there we have our finished design. We've downloaded our puzzle texture and we've applied it to our image and then cut out some pieces and just given it the look of an unfinished jigsaw puzzle. I'm Helen Bradley. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. Look out for more video tutorials here on my YouTube channel and consider subscribing to my channel and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. And visit my website at projectwoman.com where you'll find more tips, tricks and tutorials on a range of applications, including Photoshop, Lightroom, Illustrator and a whole lot more.